time will be in the Spiritual Life Building starting at 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. 8 to 10, that's the men's prayer, fellowship, breakfast. um, uh, Come and join us for that, Uh, all the men. um, And yes, I know it's deer season. Okay, I'm well aware that it is deer season. Um, But you can come for a few minutes and then we'll let you go deer hunt. Um, But um, come and join us for that. It has been a true blessing. Uh, and we'd love to have you come and be a part of it. And then coming up in December, um, December the 9th, there's Blood Drive. Uh, it will start at 1.30 and run through 6 uh, in the Spiritual Life Building. Make your appointments for that. And if you normally volunteer or you would like to volunteer, please contact Miss D and let her know. Uh, also, it is time for poinsettias, so um, the forms are in the foyer, uh, so um, pick them up, get them filled out, and you turn them, get them back in to Miss Flo, uh, so that uh, she can have that information, we can get all of that together uh, for this year. Um, there will be, uh, the list will be coming out for the Sunday school on the Christmas cards for Sunday school classes so um keep your eye open for that that's coming um man we're almost to christmas really wow where did this year go right uh, but anyway all right keep those things in mind is there any other announcements don't forget the uh, blessing box cam uh in the church yes Okay, all right, all right, Uh, in way of prayer request then, um, continue to remember, um, of course it's always good to see Brother Earl with us this morning, continue to remember him and Miss Cindy in your prayers with Jerry Crocker and Miss Janet, remember Brother Jerry uh, in your prayers, Uh, Miss Barbara Reardon, uh, Miss Annie Ruth, continue to remember Miss Annie Ruth in your prayers, and of course uh, always good to see Miss Linda with us and Miss Renee and as I look around, there's Miss Ellen and um, a whole lot of folks here today that um, uh, had every excuse to stay at home but didn't. Uh, but the ones that were able made an excuse and stayed home. Isn't that something? Uh, but anyway, we are glad to see you. Don't forget uh, Brother Jimmy Barber's family uh, with the passing of his uh, grandmother last week and burial. Uh, Mr. Dale and Miss Inez, uh, Tim and Lois, continue to remember Tim in your prayers. The barbershop list also, uh, know that list is always long. Uh, continue to remember Miss Dar Stokes, uh, Miss Kathy Peets, uh, sister, continue to remember her in your prayers also. Uh, Brother Fred Baker, continue to mem- remember him um, uh, with his medicine and all that he's got going on still, uh, continue to remember him. Pastor Lloyd, continue to remember Pastor Lloyd in your prayers. Uh, Brother Johnny and uh, Sister Gladys, continue to remember uh, them. Uh, Nancy's co-workers, Lynn Gentry and Cindy Weeks, uh, continue to remember them. I do want you to remember uh, both of them. Uh, both of them are battling cancer, but um, uh, remember Lynn because her family has now come down with COVID, and that was the last thing that she needed. Uh, so remember them as they battle through that now uh, in the midst of everything else that's going on. Um, uh, Miss Mildred, Mr. James Bailey, uh, Lisa Parrish, Nicole Verdula, remember Nicole. I did get a message from her this morning to remember her in prayers, and she's still got unspoken uh, to remember. And uh, Miss Frances Reams, uh, remember Miss Frances. Amen. Okay. They did a procedure. She's out of pain. Hey. Amen. Praise the Lord. I mean, she's doing good, and she's just on the road to recovery. We give God all the credit. God is good. All the time. And he's all the time good, right? Amen. All right. 
All right, uh, don't forget our nation and our leaders. Let's don't forget our state and our leaders here. All of those that serve our communities, wherever they may be, here in Clayton or in the surrounding areas, our fire, EMTs, police, uh, and remember our military. Um, for those that are here at home or those that are abroad or even those that are getting ready to deploy, uh, remember each and every one of them. Remember the hospitals and those there the staff, nursing homes, and the staff there uh, also. Is there any others at this time? Yes. Okay. Remember uh, uh, Reverend Allen Price. Um, I, I did see that earlier this week. Thank you, Miss Joyce. Miss Ellen. Any others? Uh, remember, uh, I mentioned him once before, Randy Eats. Randy Eats? Yes, he's got cancer. <coughs> okay. But they had put a port in, started chemotherapy, that was over a month ago. He caught a staph infection from the port. Oh, wow. He ended up in the hospital seven days. And they said if they had started the chemotherapy, it would have killed him. Yeah. So they had to go in and remove that and put another one in. And right. Hopefully, it will start the chemotherapy this month. Okay, so remember him in your prayers. Any others? Remember James Parks. Okay. Mr. Uh, Sister Pearl's son. Okay. Give her praise. Amen. He worked all week and went to church last Sunday. <laughs> planning to go this Sunday. Hey, Amen. He still has heart issues, heart problems. So please remember Brother James, uh, James Parks. James Parks. Yes, ma'am. Glory be to God. We Amen. like the praises, right? Amen. Uh, we've, he's worthy of our praises, Amen. right? Amen. Hey, Amen. Yeah, give him praise. All right, any others? Yes. Okay. All right. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes, Miss Linda. Okay. Okay. All right. And we're claiming the same thing, right? Amen. Two words, but God, right? Nobody but God. Amen. All right. So we're claiming it. Any I, have a, I have a neighbor that's going in Thursday for a um, ace maker, Mr. Okay. Johnson. Okay. And um, continue to remember Ronnie's stepmom. She's getting over bronchitis and okay. you know, some things just going on. And um, also, I'd like for y'all to continue to remember Travis's unit at okay. work. Okay. Two of the guys that were on the scene when the officers were hurt and it killed have not been able to come back to work. And they desire our prayers too. Okay. All right. Anyone else? Yes. We have one here online from Jack Cleveland asking for prayers for Barbara. Okay, so Miss Barbara. Miss Barbara Cleveland. Any others? Anita. 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 I, I tied to the class as possible. Okay, all right. Remember that. We need to remember the youth of our day. Yes, the young folks. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. For all of those that are um, struggling, a lot of people struggling now. Miss Sue, yes. Anyone else? Those lost. Let's remember them. Anyone else? Miss Joyce? Anyone else? Those by uplift of hands. Everybody has somebody. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, and uh, then we're going to sing a song, and then we're going to open up the Word of God. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you, Lord, for your many, many blessings. And Lord, we know that today is a blessing. We know, Lord, that you are in the midst of it. Lord, we know that you are here with us and that you're watching over us. And we ask you now, Lord, to lead us, guide us, and direct us. And Lord, we just pray that you would just be, uh, Lord, ever so mindful. But Lord, we know that you know our every needs. You know our every thoughts. You know, Lord, what we stand in need of the most. Lord, we pray that you would search out our hearts, Lord, that you would cleanse our hearts. And Lord, that we would be willing, Lord, uh, Lord, uh, to allow you, Lord, uh, to make right 
uh, all those things in our lives. And Lord, we just pray now, Lord, that you would just be with each and every name that's been mentioned, each and every request, each and every one that stands in need of a touch from you today. Lord, we just pray, Lord, that they would receive that touch. And Lord, so many names have been mentioned. So many people stand ready to receive. And Lord, we're claiming victory today in each and every one. We're claiming, Lord, your anointed touch upon them. Lord, I just pray you be in the midst uh, of each and every life. Lord, we just ask you to be with our nation, our leaders. We pray, Lord, that you would be all with all of those that serve our communities Lord, that you would watch over uh, the young folks in this in this land, Lord. That, Lord, most of all, Lord, that you would uh, strike and ignite that fire within them, Lord, for you. That they might see who they're missing out on, who their Savior truly is. And Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you would use each and every one of us as a light. Lord, now lead us as we go into this time of worship. Lord, we just pray for your leadership, your guidance. We pray for your blessings, and we pray for it in the precious name of Jesus. Amen and amen. If you'd stand and join us this morning. That's one of those songs I can uh, uh, that I'm I can get excited about. Is to know that my name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. 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 Huh? And that song's also real dear to my heart too because it's yonder. yonder. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Must have been a Southerner. But anyway, um, it is so good to know that um, because of what Jesus has done, that um, our name can be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. And you see, and that's where, that's where our Heavenly Father is going to go when it comes judgment time. He's going to go to the Lamb's Book of Life. The names that will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life are going to be those names that have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. And you know, it's ever so important now that, that we share 
just that, that we share what he's done for us. And we do have generations now that are struggling, and they're struggling only because they don't know their Savior. They don't know the Savior of the world. Jesus said, I come to seek and to save that which is lost. The great commission that he gave to the disciples told them to go out into the world, baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. And he promised that where they were, he would be there with them also. So the commission didn't end. The work that Christ came here to do, he finished salvation, but he did not finish saving all those that could be saved, that would want to be saved. You see, there has to be a desire in our hearts. There has to be a want. There has to be a desire to be set free from this world. But yet, at the same time, God sits ready to set us free. Scripture says all we have to do is call upon the name of Jesus and believe. Believe that he died for our sins and that God raised him from the dead. And Scripture says, and you shall. It doesn't say you might or you may be. It says you shall be saved. And you see, and the thing is, is that, that we live in a world where the enemy is, is, is rampant, where the enemy right now is having a heyday and a field day because nobody's looking to God. Everybody's looking to government and the world. They're not looking to the God who provides for his children. It, they're not looking to the God that sustained the Israelites in the wilderness for 40 years. And when I say sustained, I meant he fed them, he gave them drink. Not only that, he gave them clothes. The clothes they had didn't even wear out. They couldn't even out, they couldn't wear out their sandals for 40 years. And this is the same God today that says, if you'll just trust me, I'll meet every need that you have. I'll provide for you because you're my child. And you see, and the thing is, is the enemy tells us, says, no, no, you're in this fight alone. You're by yourself. No, let me go ahead and assure you, you're not by yourself. You're not in it by yourself. The devil is a liar. Amen. In your Bibles this morning, in the book of John, one verse, the book of John Chapter 10, verse 10. John 10, 10. Because you see, in chapter 10, Jesus is speaking of the good shepherd. Speaking of himself as being the door. There is no way to God except through Christ Jesus. There is no way to God without him. There are not many ways, there's one way. The devil today in the world that we live in wants you to think that there are multiple ways to God. But Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes unto the Father but by me. And no means no. And all means all, amen. But you see, Jesus here in the, these verses of Scripture is speaking to the Israelites and the scribes and the Pharisees and the disciples. And as he does this, he's trying to get them to understand that he is the I Am. He uses I Am multiple times in these verses. And that's what infuriated the religious leaders, what that Christ would associate himself with God. But yet he is the second part of the Holy Trinity. You cannot have salvation without having all three of them. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit brings us into the very presence of Christ and gives us the ear of Christ. Christ, on that, on, on that pretense of the Holy Spirit, speaks for us into the very ear of our Father in heaven. 
You can't have anything without having all. You can't have God without having the Son and the Holy Ghost. I don't know that I would want anything else without the Holy Ghost. Amen. I kind of like my chastising sometimes because it brings me back where I need to be. And let me go ahead and just say, learn the difference between being chastised, okay, and what the devil does to you. You need to learn the difference between them because there is a difference. Not everything is God chastising us. A lot of times it's the fact that the world we live in and that the devil is on us and he's about us and he's in our business and he's making our life miserable because, well, I'm supposed to be a child of God. He's not supposed to be able to do that. What did you do to allow him? Because he can't normally. But it doesn't mean that he's going to give up. Hmm. He doesn't give up till he's cast into the lake of fire and then it's over with. Okay. But in John chapter 10 verse 10, Jesus says these words. He says, the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. And Jesus used the words of deity and authority. I am come that they might have life. And that they might have it more abundantly. Heavenly Father, bless the reading and expounding of your holy word. May every word that is spoken be yours and yours alone. May our hearts be reached. And Lord, most of all, may the name of Jesus be magnified and glorified. For it is in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. All right. So anyway... The first thing we have to do is we have to identify the enemy. And Jesus said the thief. The thief is not necessarily the devil. Sometimes it is people. Now, preacher, you know not. Yes, I do know. I do know that there are there, there's, there's some that call me, and they don't call me to tell me how great things are. They call me to tell me how bad things are, how things are not being done right or things are not. They want to complain about things. And do you have any idea what that does to your soul and to your joy? It just sucks the life completely out of it. If I want to look at that, I'll look at the news. You ain't got to call me and tell me about it. I got it. I understand it. But you need the identity of who the thief is. As Christians, we are supposed to be encouragers. We're supposed to be those that have that smile on our face when nobody else is smiling. Those that look at people and say, I'm sorry you're having a bad day, but God bless you. He still loves you. You're supposed to be that light in a dark world. You're not supposed to be one of the thieves that come to steal the joy and the happiness. That's not what we are called to do. We're called to be the light in darkness. How do I know? Because Jesus himself looked at the disciples and said, You are the light. He said to the church, You are the light. You're supposed to be lighting the way. You're supposed to be lighting the darkness. Let me go ahead and tell you the only reason that darkness exists is because nobody's bringing the light. If you bring the light into the room, the darkness has to flee. But you see, the thing is, is that we're not to be discouragers by no means. We're to be encouragers. Jesus said the thief, he comes for a purpose. He comes to steal your happiness. He comes to steal from you. When in this particular uh, context of what Jesus was saying, he was talking about the sheepfold. He said the, the thief comes to steal the sheep. The devil is having a field day with the churches right now because so many 
So many refuse to come and worship collectively now. He's having a field day tearing it apart. Let me go ahead and tell you this. Don't let him tear it apart. Don't let him tear your families apart. Don't let him tear your churches apart. Don't let him tear it apart because that's what he seeks to do. He's seeking to steal from the flock. Well, preacher, I, I can watch it sitting at home. That's a, that's a blessing. But let me ask you a question. When you watch it at home, how many cups of coffee do you drink in the time that the preacher is preaching? And how many times do you go to the bathroom? Because it's not the same. It's not the same. You have more freedom you feel like at home than you do here. You're going to sit and listen because mainly some of you just don't want nobody to see you get up. <laughs> but you see, this is the tactic of Satan. This is the tactic of the thief. Is He's come to steal and to kill and to destroy he cares nothing for you just like the world cares nothing for you. It does not care whether you live or die. The devil does not care. The only thing he does not want you to do is utter the name of Jesus, 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 and worship God. And if he can distract you away from worship, if he can distract you away from the word of God, if he can distract you away, then he is accomplishing just exactly what the deceiver is here to do. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, Be sober, the word of God says. And that does not mean don't be drunk. That means to be clear-minded, okay? Drunk is a whole new thing. It's a whole different thing. Don't do that either. clarify somebody's going to send me a message <laughs> be sober be clear minded he said be vigilant in other words always be aware see you're not you think that the watchman on the wall is the preachers no no if you can't identify the enemy you're in trouble already because the enemy is here, he's present, he's, he's in the world around us. He is that principality, he is the God of this world, little g. But he says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, your adversary, your enemy, Peter said. Peter said, he's not just my enemy, he's your enemy. Your adversary, the devil, is a, as a roaring lion. He walketh about seeking whom he may devour. That word devour means to destroy. He doesn't care. You see, but you have a heavenly father that does. He cares. He cares whether you spend eternity in heaven or hell. He cares. You see, the scripture is very specific. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4 says this, In whom the little g God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light, unless, now you listening, unless the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine into them. Did you hear what the Word of God just said to you and me? It says it's your responsibility. He says it's the, it's the devil, it's the God of this world, of this, this principality and this power. He is the principality and power of this air. He says, but he's blinded the minds of, those, of them which believe not. He said, but that's not the end. 
He says, unless the light, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ. Uh-huh. See? Unless the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So it's the gospel that lights the way. It's the gospel that illuminates the world, that illuminates the darkness. It is the gospel, and and Satan has no power over the gospel. He must flee at the very name of Jesus. But then we're to remember, as I said, that it's not always the devil that's the thief. And sometimes it is people. In Romans 14, verse 13, Let us not therefore judge one another any more, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. In other words, we need to stop looking at their, we need to stop judging them, and we need to look at what we're doing for them. Or to them? Are we being an encouragement? Or are we being a discouragement? Are we shining the light of Christ? Or are we feeding the darkness? In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, says this, says, Let no man despise thy youth. He was speaking to Timothy. He says, But... Be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. He says, this is what you're supposed to be, Timothy. It doesn't matter what anybody else says. Don't let them bring you down. So what I need to start doing is answering them calls when... Certain ones call me and want to complain. I need to go into one of them places between towers. <laughs> Whoops. Drop my call. Man. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. But you see, the thing is, is he says, be an example of what a believer is supposed to be. Be that example in the words that you say, in your conversations, in your love for others, in spirit and in purity. Woo. That one right there preached right by itself. Amen. But you see, the thing is, is that Jesus said that the thief comes to to do these things, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, don't worry about it. Don't stress over it. Get your eyesight right. Get your heart focused where it's supposed to be focused. He says, because I am. It's one of those things where I believe, honestly and truly, we can end the message right now with the fact that Jesus said, I am. What else do you need? What else should we need other than the great I am? He says, but I want you to know I came for a purpose. I came to seek and to save that which was lost. I came to be the shepherd. I came to know my flock Not only does he know his flock, his flock knows him. They hear his voice and know him. And I use that one a lot when somebody says, how are you going to know when the Lord's coming back and he calls? I'm going to say it because the scripture says that as his sheep, I know his voice. And not only do I know his voice, I hear his voice. Let me go ahead and tell you something. Sometimes when it comes, you need to remember that you don't hear necessarily with your ears when it comes to spiritual manners. You hear with your heart. So he says, I am come for this purpose, 
Not that the devil can steal or people can steal, kill, and destroy. He says, I've come for another purpose, that they might have life. That they might have life. What is life? The scripture tells us, John eleven twenty five. 25, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. He was speaking to Martha about Lazarus. And I want you to understand something, church, that when Jesus said, I am, again, that's all we needed. But he said, I am the resurrection and the life. What is life? Jesus said, I come that you might have life. Well, let me go ahead and tell you, brothers and sisters, if you are blood-bought, washed in the blood of the Lamb, then you are already alive forever. Not only are you in the presence of God right now with the Son, because Scripture says that in Christ we are seated on His throne at the right hand of the Father. So not only are you already in the presence of God, when it is your time to leave this world, you will go to sleep. Your soul and your spirit will enter into the very presence of God. Paul said to be, to, to be absent of the body is to be present with the Lord. So let me go ahead and assure you that you already, if you know Jesus and have accepted him as your Lord and Savior, you are already, already alive. I am the resurrection and the life, he said. He that believes in me, though he were dead, he's not necessarily, he's not talking about a physical death now. He's talking about a spiritual death. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. Let's understand that we weren't in the image of God, we are in the image of the fallen Adam. But in the image of the new Adam, we are made right. In the image of Jesus, we are made right. What Adam lost in the garden, Christ fulfilled on the cross. He set those things which were wrong, he set them back right. Whew. Huh? What is life? Jesus said, I come that they might have life and not only have it, but have it more abundantly. Have more of it. Huh? So just so you leave from here today with an understanding is that there's a whole lot more life to come. Huh? In Romans chapter 6, verse 23, for the, the wages of sin are death, but the gift, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. He said, I come to seek and to save that which is lost. I come to give life that they might have life. And not only just have it, but have more of it. Let me go ahead and tell you, you should walk out the doors of the church today acting like you are on fire and that there is life within you that is not of this world because you do. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 20. And we know, and we know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true. Even in his son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Woo. I mean, church, really. Jesus said... I come that you might have life. And see, and there's two things in this verse of Scripture. First, we need to know who the enemy is. And second, we need to know the life giver. 
more abundantly, he says. Romans chapter 5, verse 17. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Back to Adam, the first Adam. By the offense, death came into the world. But, but much more, much more, he said, they which receive abundance of grace. The word grace there is favor. How many here today feel favored by God? Hey, man, I like his favor. I like his grace. But he, he says these words. He says, it's, and have received abundance of grace, and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by Christ. So church, church, you're overcomers. Church, you're victorious. Church, you have abundant life. Church, you have life and you have it more abundantly. The thief comes cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Those are Jesus' words. And we finish today with this. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. He says, finally, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Because the devil will come. The people will come. Somebody's coming. Somebody's coming to suck the life and to suck the joy and to suck the happiness out of you. They're coming. But what he wants you to understand most of all is they don't control it. They're not in charge of it. They don't have control of joy. They do not have control of life. They do not control. The devil has no control. He can just deceive. It's up to you whether you receive or not. But again, he says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Because God's able. God's able to do all things, right? There's nothing he can't do. And if you trust him, there's nothing he won't do. Amen. You just need to know the enemy. But you need to know Christ above all. Because you see, you are the light. Go out in the world and be it. Let the light shine. So that someone who's in darkness might be set free. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this place. We thank you for all that you do for us. We ask you now, Lord Jesus, to lead us as we go through this time. Lead us as we go into this next few minutes. And may you, above all, be magnified, glorified, and the name of Jesus lifted high. In thy precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good song.